All martial arts begin with respect and end with respect. Be sure to learn the etiquette of your particular art as this is an outward expression of gratitude and appreciation to the sacrifice of those who came before you and a reverence toward the blade. Carefully guide the katana through your obi until it comes out. Let it rest on the bottom hemo of the hakama. Once in position, hold the sword closed with your thumb positioned at two o'clock on the suba. Do not keep your thumb directly above the blade as accidental slipping of the blade can cause an injury. Footwork. The footwork of swordsmanship is critical. First, it's important to note that the footwork will depend on the branch of sword training that you practice. However, certain principles, such as having a firm movable stance, remain true through all. Whether you wear a tubby or your barefoot, you must remain connected to the earth beneath you. There is a sense of light yet heavy, this ability to slide forward or back. Feel the weight transfer from front foot to rear and rear to lead. Allow your toes to grip the mat like a crouched leopard. You should be able to pounce at will. All movement with the feet must facilitate the cutting angle of the sword. Do not hold the sword with outward wrist. This will cause your four knuckles to be misaligned with the cutting edge of the sword. If swung in this manner, the sword's cutting edge will be slow, the arms will be stiff, and the cutting of the air will be lessened. Also, while doing cutting practice, there is the danger of the sword flying out of your hands. Thus, cutting and the handling of a sharp sword must be done by serious practitioners who are dedicated to the mastery of their craft. While opening with the right hand, pull with the left. The left hand is pulling the saya, while the right hand is cutting across in a horizontal stroke. Here, don't be tense, yet keep intensity of purpose. Open in a broad strike as if cutting through a tidal wave. Pull the left elbow back to increase range of motion. Open the sword and connect to the breath. Here, the breathing is abdominal breathing. Resheating of the sword or noto is when we return the blade to the scabbard. There are different types of noto. The important thing when working with a shinken or live blade is safety. Be sure not to let your fingers come in contact with the cutting edge of the sword. Head. Place. Keep the spine upright and the spine suspended. Maintain a firm grip on the handle. Cast the sword forward in a large arc. Throw the tip outward as if fishing in a great lake. Let the sword stop parallel to the mats. Maintain extension of your arms and elbows. Let your triceps support your forearms. When you lift the sword overhead, lead from the tip of the sword, the kisaki. When you swing the sword, find connection from the base of your feet up through your legs, permeate through the upper body and out into the sword. Let the sword be an extension of you. Bow to the sword and bow to the kamiza or kamidana, then bow to the teacher. Yaido practice is a meditation in motion. Please remember, the sword that kills is the same sword that gives life. This killing should not be only understood as a person. This killing is also an ending to all hindrances and distractions to kill your own doubts, frustrations, weaknesses, impatience and so on. This killing of the evils within is crucial, as it's what gives birth to the good, the new you, the new life. More of these talks are further outlined in my book, A Walk Toward Victory Over the Ego, Journey Inward. Be sure to read those passages and put them from paper to heart. It is my wish that you journey safely and journey well.
Course 1. Fundamentals and Basics. Let's start with wearing the Hakama. Follow along step by step. The proper attire should be worn with each session. Tie the Hemo around the front and back. Tie the cords above and below your belt. This will keep your Hakama on securely and your sword in place during practice. A bow in the front of your Hakama is optional. Either a bow or a knot will suffice. The main thing is that the Hakama is snug around the abdomen area, as that is the area where your sword will be maneuvered. The cords of the Hakama are called Ahimo. They will wrap around the top of your obi, then intersect and cross around the back and then tie again in the front. Once they tie in the front, bring them around the back and tie it once again. Your obi or belt will first wrap around your keikogi. The obi should be snug around the abdomen. Keep the cords as flat as possible around the waist area. Pull all the cords snug but not too tight. Not to lose, not too tight. After you secure a knot in the center of the back, lift the hakama's tail and allow the upper back support to cover the back of the obi. There's two hemo cords attached to the back of the hakama. Bring those two cords to a final tie in the front. And it is there that you should wrap everything together. All the cords will meet together and a final knot can be made. You can make a knot or you can make a bow at the center. If there is any excess, be sure to tuck away. Drawing of the sword is a push-pull dynamic. While you push with your right hand, you pull with your left. Depending on the angle of your first cut, you will twist the sheath to the angle in which you intend to cut. The important thing here is body connection and learning how to draw from your center, much like a free throw in basketball. There is a centered internal focus. This allows the player to release the ball into the hoop. So the supporting hand which unsheathes the sword is like a bow, which draws the arrow upon release the blade cuts. It's an important thing here to activate the pinky. As you push and pull, the final snapping of the sword is driven by your pinky. Allow your pinky finger to pull tightly against the base of the handle to cause the final sharp cutting action of the sword. In Nukitskaya, both mind and body must be a one. Once the body flows properly, the sword will follow. In drawing the sword, there should be the element of speed, a quick draw. However, in the beginning, emphasize good technique and proper form. 
Each style in swordsmanship has their particular way to draw the sword of which they espouse. The key is to act with intensity of purpose in whichever way you draw the sword. Syncopate the timing so that when the sword is drawn, your stance will solidify. Don't draw the sword, then step. Draw and step as one. One body, one mind, one sword. So, chiburi is the shaking off of clinging particles and or blood to the sword. Don't make a big deal of it. However, keep the tip of the sword active and ready. Keep the motion smooth and flowing while the sword drops down. Then come to a sharp stop. Let the kisaki or tip of the sword be around the height of the knee. Then proceed to resheath your sword. Bow to the sword and bow to the kamiza or kamidana, then bow to the teacher. Yaido practice is a meditation in motion. Please remember, the sword that kills is the same sword that gives life. This killing should not be only understood as a person. This killing is also an ending to all hindrances and distractions to kill your own doubts, frustrations, weaknesses, impatience and so on. This killing of the evils within is crucial, as it's what gives birth to the good, the new you, the new life. More of these talks are further outlined in my book, A Walk Toward Victory Over the Ego, Journey Inward. Be sure to read those passages and put them from paper to heart. It is my wish that you journey safely and journey well.
bow to the sword and bow to the kamiza or kamidana, then bow to the teacher. Yaido practice is a meditation in motion. Please remember, the sword that kills is the same sword that gives life. This killing should not be only understood as a person. This killing is also an ending to all hindrances and distractions to kill your own doubts, frustrations, weaknesses, impatience and so on. This killing of the evils within is crucial as it's what gives birth to the good, the new you, the new life. More of these talks are further outlined in my book, A Walk Toward Victory Over the Ego, Journey Inward. Be sure to read those passages and put them from paper to heart. It is my wish that you journey safely and journey well. It is my stance of no stance that martial arts and the Budo tradition nourish the mind, body, and soul. Just as food and water give our physical body vitality, so too does the study of Budo nurture us. This book is for those looking to improve their life by learning how to go within, examine the ego, and merge with the infinite potential of the correct view. You, the reader, will have to take action, perform a self-examination. It will be difficult. However, in the end, you will know how to keep your center and not get taken off balance, physically and mentally. It is my stance of no stance that a person must embark on the journey of learning the martial arts in some way, either at a school or from another individual. The learning of the arts is a necessity for thoroughly understanding the writings and lessons in this book. It is my stance of no stance that you, the reader, must meditate on these words. The reader must know that these words are just the gate. Excerpt Chapter 9 Go Through the Dark Side Only a man who knows what it is like to be defeated can reach down to the bottom of his soul and come up with the extra ounce of power it takes to win when the match is even. Spitfire and chew nails. Chop sturdy wood. Carry buckets of heavy water. I can only impart the concept of going through to the dark side. However, it is a personal journey that only you can take to understand fully. Also, there are a few teachings on this matter that I can impart only to students I train, those with a strong mind and people of the way. The conditioning of the martial arts is a special thing. I have seen some of the most arrogant become the most humble simply through hard training. There simply is no shortcut in terms of the conditioning that comes along with Budo training. Whether it is striking the Makiwara hundreds of times, doing iron palm training for the hands, or working many boxing rounds on the heavy bag, or endless swings with the heavy boken, the training is designed to make you do one thing. Dig. You must dig deep within yourself. You must journey inward. There you will see the core of yourself. It is a quiet place, a place that generally is not visited. It is this place that can rest on the tip of a hair, yet it is so grand that it contains the whole of the universe. It is your spirit. What I have seen is that those who doubt the existence of spirit have not dug deep enough in the soil. The minerals and precious stones are deep. They are not on the surface. Sound is at the surface but silence is at the core. Many give up on the journey inward. They grow exhausted while digging and maybe even claim this is too difficult a task. Therefore, 
they do not make it down far enough. Those who are willing to remain steadfast, maintain discipline, and continue to dig will reach the grand horizon, where the warriors dwell. It is a special place, reserved for the few. During my time in Osaka, Japan, I was fortunate to visit Shaitanoji Temple. Bow to the sword and bow to the kamiza or kamidana, then bow to the teacher. Yaido practice is a meditation in motion. Please remember, the sword that kills is the same sword that gives life. This killing should not be only understood as a person. This killing is also an ending to all hindrances and distractions to kill your own doubts, frustrations, weaknesses, impatience and so on. This killing of the evils within is crucial, as it's what gives birth to the good, the new you, the new life. More of these talks are further outlined in my book, A Walk Toward Victory Over the Ego, Journey Inward. Be sure to read those passages and put them from paper to heart. It is my wish that you journey safely and journey well. Let us see the natural simplicity of what will be said here. That is, if we want to improve society, we must start with ourselves. To improve ourselves, we must shine a light on our weak areas. Then, we must go inward to find the cause of our ignorance. There is where our ego sits. Once the ego is found, we still have to go deeper and begin to extract, dissolve, or put to use. All that is without first comes from within. To go inward, it will take courage. To sit alone with yourself in silence will speak volumes to who you are. Courage will be necessary, and I am certain that you can do it. You may have to walk through some difficult doors, but inward fortitude is a must. It is said that to have knowledge and not contribute is to share the road of the greedy, so I have decided to put to paper some teachings from my experience that will help you on your path. But do not confuse knowledge with knowing. This is not a course for linear logic. It is for you to observe inwardly and see the truth of yourself. Ego can be defined as a person's self-esteem or self-worth. We cannot put an end to the ego. As long as we have breath, our ego will breathe with us. My intention is not to capture and detain the ego. That would not be possible, as the ego is intangible. What we will set out to do is observe. Observe inwardly our thoughts and emotions. I want to give you a tool that is of great importance in any endeavor, especially in a self-defense situation. That tool is called awareness. Make no mistake, this is indeed self-defense.
bow to the sword and bow to the kamiza or kamidana, then bow to the teacher. Yaido practice is a meditation in motion. Please remember, the sword that kills is the same sword that gives life. This killing should not be only understood as a person. This killing is also an ending to all hindrances and distractions to kill your own doubts, frustrations, weaknesses, impatience and so on. This killing of the evils within is crucial as it's what gives birth to the good, the new you, the new life. More of these talks are further outlined in my book, A Walk Toward Victory Over the Ego, Journey Inward. Be sure to read those passages and put them from paper to heart. It is my wish that you journey safely and journey well. Bow to the sword and bow to the kamiza or kamidana, then bow to the teacher. Yaido practice is a meditation in motion. Please remember, the sword that kills is the same sword that gives life. This killing should not be only understood as a person. This killing is also an ending to all hindrances and distractions to kill your own doubts, frustrations, weaknesses, impatience and so on. This killing of the evils within is crucial, as it's what gives birth to the good, the new you, the new life. More of these talks are further outlined in my book, A Walk Toward Victory Over the Ego, Journey Inward. Be sure to read those passages and put them from paper to heart. It is my wish that you journey safely and journey well. <laughs> 